I'm Secretary of State of the State of Kansas. My name is Chris Kobach and the uh, chief responsibilities of my office are maintaining the voter rolls and overseeing the elections for the state and maintaining the uh, list of registered businesses and overseeing the business filings of our state. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So this experiment is about overcoming some of like the most difficult problems facing government today and obviously you know in your position you have plenty to do you got full days. <laughs> what compelled you to accept the invitation to come here? Well in Kansas, we are trying to do something that is new and different. And at first glance, you might think, well, hasn't that already been done before? But, but actually, no. We're trying to create a one-stop shop so that when you form a business, a little LLC, or maybe a big corporation, you can do it all in one place over the Internet and not like the status quo where you are going to have to go visit the Secretary of State's office to register your business. Then you're going to have to send documents to the Department of Revenue for tax purposes, the Department of Labor for employees, uh, the Department of Agriculture if it has to do with that, or the Department of Health and Environment if it has to, if it's a restaurant for example. And right now you have to go to so many different places and you have to keep creating your entity over and over, so giving them the same information over and over. So we want to uh, have a, a, a system uh, we're calling it the Kansas Business Center, where you just go and you provide all this information, you create the entity once, your entity is given a unique identifier, and then the, 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 co the computer does the rest for you, or the system, the software does the rest for you, and you don't have to go again and again to various government entities giving them the same information that should have been seamlessly uh, trans transferred to everyone. And then on the back end of it, we want to make the information accessible to the public there is a lot of really useful information in the mountain of data that the Secretary of State's office has. For example, the business data we have, we have um, all of the new filings, all the new businesses that were created, all of the entrepreneurs uh, in a given calendar year who decided, you know what, I'm going to go into business and I'm going to start a company. Well, uh, in January of 2013, uh, I thought, you know, this is an interesting economic indicator. When we think about our economy, we look at unemployment numbers, we look at uh, GDP, but I'd never seen a, a, an accurate measure of business startups. Mm. Well, we're sitting on that information in the Secretary of State's offices of the 50 states. So I said, well, let's see if we can get a, a list of, uh, or rather a, a total of all the businesses that started up in 2012 and compare it to the previous nine years. Turns out the information was there, but even within our own office, it wasn't easily accessible. It mm. took a lot of manual counting to actually come up with this information. Papers. And, yeah, papers or, or there might be some totals, but the totals were not integrated into a seamless uh, system. And so you had to you know, go into one uh, database to get this number, another database to get that number. You know, we still have PDFs, which are you know, images of the papers that our office used to, to collect. But still, it's, it, it needed to be done more efficiently and quickly and accessible to the public. So we, we then took this number. Turned out that in uh, calendar year 2012, there was a record number of, of businesses created. Now that's kind of odd. That's coming out of a recession. You wouldn't expect there to be a record number. So there was something interesting happening. We sent that information uh, to the University of Kansas and uh, the professor there thought this was amazing information and other people started noticing once we had a press conference and said, hey look, here's something we discovered. Uh, I got calls from, from out, out of state. People saying, well can you get that information to us uh, monthly? This is really interesting. I said, look, <laughs> at this point we can only get it ourselves uh, once a year, but we realized that this data has benefit to economists, to the public generally, um, and it could have benefit to the businesses themselves if we allow greater access to this information in a way that protects the privacy of the business owner, of course, but at the same time allows people looking for, for research tools and, and data sets to really um, to use them effectively. So I'm going to pause you one, one second there and just pull up your recording level. Because uh, I want to ask, and this was, it was in the back of my mind while you were speaking about this, because I know mm. there's a student project that's working with uh, Delaware to do a, a similar thing to open up their yeah. data as well. And my question is, of what you mentioned, how do you protect the business's uh, identity, right? There's got to be some, it, it, there's got to be some pushback from that. Do they want all their information out there? 
Well, the, one of the things that businesses want first and foremost is the reason they initially come to the Secretary of State's office is they want the protection of their name, mm -hmm. right? So a business starts and they want to protect that name and have that name as, as their unique business name. And so that's part of what filing uh, your, your corporate papers with your Secretary of State's office is all about. So that protection is there. But then there's a lot of information that a business probably wants to disseminate, mm -hmm. like where their place of business is. It, it's more useful for them if the public can easily find out where their address is. They might want to disseminate what their business is engaged in. You know, are they are they selling carpets? Are they uh, are they a restaurant? What is it that they you know, that they are doing? Which obviously they want customers that the public might want to know. Now there are some private uh, pieces of information you probably you absolutely do not want to uh, disclose anyone's social security number. Right. You don't want to disclose any other um, private information that's sensitive of that nature. So of course not all of the data would be publicly available, but most of it would be, and indeed most of it already is. For example, if you wanted to come to the Secretary of State's office in Kansas, uh, you, actually you had to come in, in person until a few years ago, now it's available online. Oh wow. You, you can actually go to our website, mm -hmm. you can search for a corporation, you can see the original forms that were used to file, the Articles of Incorporation, and so you can actually get all that information now, most of the information that I'm, I'm talking about, but what our, our Kansas Business Center project would do would be make it more usable, more accessible, and, and, and you could get the, the aggregated data, the totals that are, are more helpful for research. This is so great because I'm a freelance producer. I'm being very selfish here, just talking about myself. But I did the same thing in New York. It's really difficult to get your business going. Just a small LLC, yeah, you have to yeah. go through all these hoops. You have to submit to fax it in is the fastest way to do it. Yeah. Was the fax machine, and then you have the publication requirements in New York at least. But I think the the one challenge that that I think I'm really interested in is these me huge corporations have smaller offshoot corporations mm -hmm. in various states is do you see that as a potential pushback from them that that maybe some of their more subsidiary companies don't want to necessarily be connected to the parent well i mean they already are uh, in the public record to a certain extent i mean there's already um for example if you have a corporation doing business in kansas uh, under a certain name but they're actually a parent company mm -hmm. that's based in another state that information is already collected by the Secretary of State's office and it's already made public, it's just not as easy to get because you have to, you know, go into the website, look for that particular corporation, then read the documents. And so, you know, the information is public already. I mean, we are going to be very sensitive to the, the privacy needs of the company, um, but you know, to a certain extent, if the information is already in the public domain, uh, it should be accessible in the public domain. Right. I love it. So, I guess just... Um so well, you've been here for most of the day you know, already here, yeah. and you've heard a lot of different opinions and insights. What are, what are some of the kind of takeaways that you've had so far? Well, one of the things that's been most interesting about working with GovLab is the fact that there are so many talented people who are interested in solving the very problems that we're interested in solving at the state of Kansas. I mean, I had no idea there were so many people who'd be here who can say, well, yeah, we've done something similar to that in this context, and we could easily adapt it to what Kansas wants to do. And uh, there's, the other thing that's really interesting is the excitement level of, you know, what might at first glance seem somewhat mundane. You know, we're creating a one-stop shop to form a business. But then when you step back and say, wait a minute, there are so many ways that that can help the business and help the public. And uh, the, the various ideas people are presenting here at the GovLab conference, it, it's pretty impressive. So I've really been amazed. I didn't come in thinking that we would be getting so much, so much out of this process. Cal Meehan is one of the people that got really excited to the mundane one-stop shop yeah, thing, because yeah. I would love that. <laughs> that would be huge for me. Uh, so then, if, if you, as a person that's on the front lines, you're, you're obviously asking questions about this space and mm -hmm. how to explore it. What can we as a, an academy or as a, a, a organization that's trying to create a research field, what questions can we ask to try to explore more of this space? What are the questions that we want to ask to try to find out more and get more answers about how to innovate and how to make things more collaborative? Well, I think part of it is just uh, finding the right person to ask, and then once you find that person, say, how can I help? Because mm -hmm. you know, there are so many, so many actors in government who are, are confronting obstacles that you know they may not know. I'm, I, I don't have a background 
in, in tech or in writing computer code or anything like that. But you know, I, I intuitively can think, well, this looks a lot like an app I've seen. This mm -hmm. has got to be possible to do. But I have no idea whom to ask, where to go, how much it's going to cost, you know, how to do it. And of course, I, I, I'm a steward of the taxpayers' dollars too. So, you know, looking for a way to do things economically. And uh, I think the the really great added value of, of GovLab is that you've got all these people coming together in one place who can say, yeah, well, that should be easy. That's going to be hard. Uh, this has already been done. This has never been done. And and so I think you know, basically finding the people and offering to help that's of immense value uh, to me in my office that so many people are willing to help. And, and you know it's it's good for everybody involved. From our perspective, it's good uh, for the Kansas business community and the Kansas taxpayer to have a project like this uh, in the Kansas Business Center. But it's also good for the people involved in providing their expertise because they can uh, take ownership in a in a pilot project that that really soars, mm -hmm. and they can uh, you know have a, a chance to see some idea that they've had in their head uh, materialize in a real government project that has a real effect on real businesses in a real state. And so I think everybody uh, is interested in building this model. And then ultimately what's really exciting is once we build it, then other states will be interested in uh, adapting it or copying it or, or w w and we're happy to build something that other states can use too because that's, you know, the idea is to maximize the public value, not just in Kansas, but in all 50 states. Do, do states have the resources to attract the talent and attract the human capital, as it were, to, to solve these problems? Well, you know, yes and no. I think some very large states might have the resources. Uh, in a state like Kansas, you know, we're a smaller state population-wise. Uh, you know, we don't have the, the budget to hire the best of the best in terms of uh, software developers or people who can write code or people who can do all of the IT tasks that need to be done. So it, it really varies. But, you know, I would say from our perspective, uh, given the fact that we, you know, we're, we're trying to keep the burden low on the taxpayers and we uh, don't foresee increasing our own budget, it's very helpful to have the academic community uh, and the uh, NGO community and all these organizations come in and say, hey, this is a worthy project, it will uh, help the public good and we'd like to be part of it. So I guess, you know, casually, it, you, it seems like you have enough nerds to help you yeah. solve your problems. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good. We need a, a bunch of nerds to all get together, <laughs> have fun, and build something useful. <laughs> Great. Cool. And so, I count myself as one of those nerds. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, you're a good company here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then, I guess, on a broader level, so you're seeing things at the state level, which, which I think is really cool because I feel like there's a lot more that you can do at the state level as opposed to like the federal level, right? Mm -hmm. Or even opposed to like yeah. other foreign countries that are you know larger than the states, right? Yeah. So you know some smaller states here. Are you okay? Sorry, I thought you were motion to me. Yeah. So smaller states here are, are have the ability to be really flexible. What do you see on a broader level for governance in general? What is what is the one thing you'd like to see change uh, as an improvement over the next five years? Wow, well, that's a that's a hard question to answer because there's so many things I'd like to see change uh, in in so many different areas of government. Um, you know, I think that if you can get people to uh, engage and gain more value out of their government, I mean, the government's doing a lot, and a lot of, and I'm speaking of all levels of government: your federal government, your state government, your local governments. There are a lot of people doing a lot of things, and a lot of that activity is not really producing a lot of return for the mm -hmm. taxpayer who's paying for it, right? The, you know, paying for the salaries of thousands of people uh, who are generating pieces of paper that are only read by their supervisors, and in, in the end, we get minimal value. out. That's not to say that the, the, the public servants aren't doing something good, but they could be doing more. And so if we can take the energy of what government is doing and capture the products and then exploit those products in, in new ways. And I'm talking about the data here. You know, we, we're, going back to the Secretary of State's office, we're sitting on this mountain of data mm -hmm. that employees have been uh, c creating and, and accepting from businesses for, for decades. But there's so much useful information in it, useful to the businesses to, to help them expand and grow, and useful to the public. You know, we can maximize the effect of those taxpayer dollars by doing what we're doing but doing it smarter mm -hmm. and doing it in a way that uh, gets every possible opportunity, realizes every possible opportunity with what the government is doing as part of its job. So I guess my final question here, the, today was an experiment and today and tomorrow are both yeah. the experiment, right? What does the second experiment look like? 
what could you see doing something like this? How could we change the way we you know, did this summit? Or what questions could we ask in the future summit uh, to really improve on what we're creating at GovLab? Well, I think th the best way to answer that is uh, are you going to you're going to have the, the question and the answer? I'm sorry. Sure, I'm whatever you want to do, okay, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll just Shnaki just ask the question. Again. Yeah. Um, the best way to answer that is to build on success. So mm -hmm. I think once the a, a few of these projects materialize and produce something that people can point to and say, you know, GovLab was a, a critical part of making that happen, then people can begin to imagine what the next step is. Mm -hmm. All right, well, if we did that in the state of Kansas, maybe we could do something even bigger in the state of New York. Mm -hmm. Or if we did that in the state of Kansas, why don't we build on that and see if we can use that data platform uh, for another purpose mm -hmm. that will, again, give the public some value for the taxpayer dollars that were spent, but without spending more dollars to get that additional value. So I think once you, once you have a few initial successes that are doing real things in the real world, then all of a sudden, you know, the, the, the sky's the limit as to how you want to expand on that or, or duplicate it or, or build something even bigger and better. That's great. Mr. Secretary, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time.